Hi, I'm Dr. Howard Rosenthal, and welcome to the new year. Unless you have been living on another planet or studying day and night for your comprehensive counseling exam, you have probably heard about Chat GPT AI. It is quite possibly the single most intelligent digital specimen of artificial intelligence in history. Within days of its release, YouTubers were posting videos to showcase how scary smart ChatGPT was with a dire warning that it could easily take millions of jobs and conceivably wipe out entire industries. Some computer coders said it was so amazing they were already doing their resumes to secure a new occupation. The stories became legendary overnight. In one instance, a YouTuber shared the program, a complete children's book that Chet wrote for this person. Another had the AI create a rap song as if it was written by Tupac in a minute or two, and it did a great job. Yet another told Chet he was on a desert island with no medical training and needed to perform one of the most difficult surgical procedures on himself. Within seconds, Chet GPT was spitting out the exact steps to accomplish this. Saying this AI is fast is akin to saying Amazon makes quite a few sales. Finally, a professor and colleague of mine called to say she assigned chat an essay assignment she gives her students and she merely said to me, well, we're all out of a job and all the students will get an A. The chat bot will write your paper as if you're a, st a seventh grader, as Donald Trump, yes, people have already tried it, Ernest Hemingway, or another Pulitzer Prize winner. The grammar and spelling will be impeccable, and it checks to make sure the document or sources are not plagiarized. And if you don't like what it comes up with, no problem. The system will regenerate additional answers or perhaps create a second essay in less time than you could chug down a short almond milk latte with cinnamon powder from Starbucks. Almost nobody had a negative word to say about the system except one computer coder who said he was surprised that it made a few simple arithmetic computations like division with small numbers. This made me suspicious and curious. It also said the system is not perfect. Could chat GPT AI help counselors study for comprehensive exams? I was hell bent on putting it through the paces. In fact, I asked it so many questions the first evening, it cut me off temporarily for asking too many questions within an hour. The system also crashed a few times from user overload. Now, spoiler alert. Although the program is beyond jaw-dropping amazing, I have a lot, yes, a lot of serious reservations about using it for comprehensive exam prep or other types of research. So, let me share a few examples. First, let me agree with other reviewers 
and maybe this is for legal reasons and at times a good thing, that the system is very conservative. Ask it a medical question and it will always end with something like, see a qualified physician or health professional. Ask it about a nutritional supplement and it generally tells you that mainstream medicine does not necessarily recommend the product. Ask it to critique a therapist or type of counseling, and it will remind you that some therapists and clients are fans of the approach and champion it. Ask it the zero to 60 time on your car, and as you will see in a minute, it will hedge and say that the time will vary depending on road conditions and the driver, etc. So with that said, here are some of my disappointing findings. Right out of the gate, I asked it about my book, The Encyclopedia of Counseling, and it made a few glaring errors. First, it said I was a researcher, not accurate, and that I was the editor of the book. Again, not true. I am the author. My guess, just a hunch, is that it searched and was misled when it discovered that I am the editor of three other counseling books. Next, I asked it a question about my HSBCP, our Human Services Board Certified Practitioner credential. It had never heard of it. Next, I asked it about the exam to secure the HSBCP, which is called the HSBCPE. And again, it could not produce an answer. It did find a medical credential with similar letters. When I told ChatGTP the credential was for human services, it said it had no information in its data bank. Now, before you say, well, that's an obscure question or it's too new, keep in mind I penned an entire book, The Encyclopedia Human Services, on the topic way back in 2014. Also, the credential and the exam are associated with the CCE, or the Center for Credentialing and Education, who handles the CPCE. By the way, posing the question in several different ways did not resolve the issue. I then asked it to Find an article I wrote about olfactory or nasal conditioning using post-hypnotic suggestions that I published at the beginning of my career. Interestingly, it found a different Howard Rosenthal associated with this topic. I ended this string of inquiries by challenging it to find a biofeedback article that's using electronic instrumentation and in counseling that I wrote again a long time ago. Here again, it came up empty-handed. So, moving to a totally different topic, I hit it with some questions on nutritional supplements, a subject I often joke I know more about than counseling. First, in defense of the AI, did I just stand up for a chat bot? Really? These were difficult questions that the average health food store employee or even alternative practitioner might have a tough time answering. I asked it about two alternative products and it had not heard of either. I gave it the researcher's name and it had no information on this person. Now, since one of ChatGPT's top functions is supposedly that it's great at copywriting, 
Since I've been an aficionado of copywriting and advertising psychology for years, I was extremely anxious to see how proficient it was in this area. Now, first, some people consider a writer named Gary Halbert, nicknamed the Prince of Print, to be the greatest copywriter in history. So, I thus asked it to rewrite something I had written for my website as if Gary Halbert had written it. It told me it was unable to do so. Hmm. Moving right along, I asked the AI to take the top advertising headlines for the 20th century listed in John Capel's advertising books and rewrite them to help me sell my materials. First, on the positive, it immediately figured out who John Capels was and the ads I was talking about. A++ for that. Score one for the chat bot. However, the alternative ad headlines it produced, at least in my humble opinion, did not follow the patterns of the greatest writers in this field and looked more like what I would expect from a middle school student or at the very best a first year college student. Not impressed. And I can assure you a high priced copywriter who charges five or $10,000 a page would just laugh if you told them this was going to put them out of business. Moving right along. Growing up, I was a real car buff. So I asked Chat the zero to 60 acceleration times on several of my favorite cars from when I was growing up. The results were disappointing. With AI quoting a rough figure of seven or eight seconds for almost every vehicle. Anybody who really is into cars is looking for something much more exact, like 6.2 seconds or 7.8 seconds. All the statistics it shared were not commensurate with those I had seen from sources, say Consumers Reports or Car and Driver Magazine. In defense of the system, it did have precise figures for a few of the newer models. When I asked it what the 10 most likely topics were on the NCE, it said it couldn't be sure, but it did share some plausible ideas such as humanistic psychology. Now, for the main act or the ultimate test, I gave Chet a few counseling exam questions. I began with a question from a forthcoming book I am writing. It missed the question I created related to step or systematic training for effective parenting based on the work of Alfred Adler as well as Rudolf Dreikhurst and Thomas Garden. Based on the answer, it was clear that the AI confused it with 12-step groups, such as AA or NA. Then, I asked it a few verbatim NCE sample study questions adhering to the ABCD answer stem format. Now again, these were verbatim questions. The chat bot answered three out of the five NBCC sample questions correctly for a score of 60%. Not that great. However, on the two questions it missed, it gave it extremely convincing explanations for its own choices four exclamation points on that one. Now, if we figure my question, okay, um, and add that to the mix 
of sample questions, it scored just three out of six for an overall score of 50%. So what's the bottom line? Can chat GPT Booster NCE CPCE CECE exam score? Well, to put it in perspective, let me share a quick but relevant story that helped me snare a National Teaching Tip of the Year award a few years back. At the time, I was writing my Human Services Dictionary and came across the strange fact that several scholarly sources in print as well as on the web disagreed on the year Eric Erickson passed away. In fact, one of the sources said he was still alive. What? In any event, my award-winning tip to create it, I simply wrote a few short paragraphs about my experience suggesting that even the top scholarly research um, resources can disagree or may flat out be wrong. The, the moral is always, yes, always check multiple resources. So here are my parting thoughts about chat GPT AI. Number one, it's amazingly smart beyond our imagination. And how, a little strange, but as you can see, it does not always know the answer. In some instances, it did not know the theory, theorist, supplement, or credential I asked it about. That said, the system is honest. On the opening screen under the heading limitations, you will see the phrase may occasionally generate incorrect information. Number two, because of its propensity to give a conservative answer, it may not always be the best source. Here again, the home page under limitations states may occasionally produce harmful instructions or biased comments. Number three, and this is not a criticism, just a heads up. Just like when I write my materials, if possible, I never rely on a single source, whether it is verbal, in print, or on the web. And chat, GTP AI, is no different. Number four, if you ask it a question, making the inquiry in several different ways might be helpful and wise. Five, an LOL, but not funny if you are talking about preparing preparing for your exam. If you ask it a question pertaining to a theorist, please be certain it is not talking about someone else, the wrong person with the same name as it did in my case. Number six, my quest to find the zero to 60 times on my cars may not seem relevant, but it underscores a very important point. The AI was not very exact. In fact, it was downright vague and appeared uh, to merely be quoting the average range of cars in a classification. High stakes counseling exams, however, are very specific, very precise. And the AI answer might not be specific enough or satisfactory. Number seven, on the positive, the system is said to be increasing its knowledge at warp speed. So in a very short time, my concerns might be a thing of the past. To get the best possible answer, I asked Chet GPT to speak for itself. I said, what are the advantages of using chat GTP 
to study for a counselor licensing or certification exam, and three reasons why a commercial study guide might be superior. Here was the system's verbatim answer. Advantages of using chat GPT to study for counselor licensing and certification exams. Number one, chat GPT can provide a wide range of information on counseling topics, allowing you to study a variety of subjects quickly and efficiently. Two, it can help you practice answering exam style questions, allowing you to become more familiar with the format and the style of the test. Three, it can provide you with instant feedback on your answers, allowing you to quickly identify any areas you need to improve. Now, chat also gave me reasons why purchasing a study guide might be better than the chat. One, study guides are specifically designed for the counseling licensing exam you will be taking and therefore may provide more targeted and relevant information. Number two, study guides may be written by experts in the field who have a deep understanding of the exam and what is required to pass it. And finally, number three, study guides may include practice questions, simulations, and other interactive elements that can help you study and retain the material better. So, in the meantime, you can use chat or even Google as a small supplement to your preparation but proceed with extreme caution. And whenever possible, stick to a reputable, tried and true exam prep study guide or materials that have stood the test of time. Okay, I'm Howard Rosenthal and I'm out of here.